When you live in an RV and you're going to be someplace where it's going to be cool or cold for a while, a lot of people put up those foil things in the windows that you can't see out of. Well, we have a better idea. It's a tip from Wisconsin. Let's go down that road. Not exactly the warm and sunny that we typically like to have in the winter time. Today is a high of 44 and it's obviously not sunny. Definitely a lot quieter than where we were in Houston last year. <laughs> We've been hearing coyotes over there in the evenings. Yeah, this is kind of it. We're pretty new and uh, not very many here yet. I think we counted 20 and there's 84 sites. Hello faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And we are in northern Texas. We're going to tell you a little bit about where we are and uh, the area that we're in and some of the places we're going to be exploring but today is mostly going to be about how to make your RV warmer without having to block out all the light. A lot of people put up that Insultec stuff in the windows and it, it just looks so dark. I totally get it in the summertime. If it's hot out that's what you got to have in your windows because it, it otherwise you'll bake. But <laughs> Um, in the winter time, it's nice to be able to see outside. Today is a little warmer than yesterday. We are about 55 today and actually a lightweight jacket was plenty with long sleeves. Although we did see somebody wearing shorts and somebody else wearing short <laughs> sleeves. I think our threshold for cold has gotten a lot smaller <laughs> than it used to be. So we're going to tell you a little bit about where we are. And then we'll show you how we're going to insulate our windows. We just showed you the, the a brief look at the RV park. Over time, we'll show you more of it. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some things they're working out yet, and so we'll have to wait till those things are done. But might not be while we're here. I don't know. Oh, you mean when they finish? Yeah, when they finish yeah, they everything. Got a lot of stuff they plan on doing yet. Yeah. So. For those of you that don't know, if you're new to our channel, first of all, welcome. But hmm. the second thing is that Gary is a retired pastor. Off and on. Yeah. yeah. This is now hmm. the sixth church since he retired. Hmm. <laughs> These are just interim yes <laughs> episodes yeah so it's not like a full-time call it's just a part-time fill-in yeah yeah gary is filling in a church vacancy again this winter and it is in midlothian and people go where is that okay if you find dallas fort worth and you go southwest of dallas you'll find midlothian it's a there's enough of a distance between Dallas and Midlothian that it's not really considered a suburb, um, but it is definitely a bigger city. Uh, about population is about thirty seven thousand right now, and it is the cement capital of Texas. There are three major cement plants in Midlothian. It, they're huge facilities. Huge. And yes. then on top of that, they are in the process right now of completing a 700-acre solar energy farm. So that's also going into Midlothian. And then there's also a steel mill that we haven't seen yet. It no, might not be in the area that we've been. We did find out through the Chamber of Commerce website, which I highly recommend, we were looking up things to do in Midlothian, things to do 
in the Midlothian area. Free things to do. Mm -hmm. The only thing that came up for free things was three parks <laughs> that you could go to. But they didn't have much really listed. So then we started looking at the Chamber of Commerce for Midlothian. And they have a couple of really fun things coming up for Christmas that we'll probably put mm -hmm. on our, in, in our, either on our Facebook page or in a video. There are other fun towns in the area though. There's one called you say it because I always mess it up. Waxahachie. Waxahachie. Yeah. Now, I have too much of a Wisconsin accent for this. Waxahachie. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm going to spell it out for you so you can <laughs> see how. The, and so I, I even asked somebody when you buy a candle, what's that made out of? And they said wax. And I'm like, but you call this waxahachie. <laughs> so we have to learn how to say things. We're going to be losing our light, uh, so we're going to talk kind of fast here. We're going to be doing, <laughs> we're going to do other videos on all these places as much as we can, uh, hopefully to get to all of them. But Waxahachie is one of them. They have uh, several fun things there. They have the Hatchie Hearts. They have 21 painted hearts in yeah. in the city. They are known to be the crepe myrtle capital of Texas. I think we will not be here in the spring for that, but. Yeah. Um, because we're only going to be here until probably January or February, somewhere around there. <laughs> we just have to keep shifting ourselves around here to get the right lighting. Anyway, and then uh, there's another one called Alvarado. 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 Yeah. Alvarado. Uh, that one looks like that's a fun town, too. Um, Glen Rose is not too far from here. There's some things in Fort Worth that we might go see. Uh, in Dallas, uh, maybe there's a few things we might get up there to see. We're not going to tell you our exact location because uh, mostly just uh, privacy and for security reasons. It's common sense. But there's other little towns, uh, little towns around too. There's one called Maypearl. That sounds really cute. Well, Italy's kind of small. Itali. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a town called Italy. No, it's Itali. <laughs> Actually, it's not Italy either. It's, or Italy. No, it is Italy. Italy, Texas. <laughs> Italy, Texas, yes. <laughs> so we're learning how to speak like the locals here. We just got to change our accent a little bit. And practice, practice, practice. Yeah. This is the window cap we're going to be using. It's made by Duck. And we have gotten it from 3M in the past. We're trying this brand to see how, how it compares. And uh, it comes with everything you need. It has the enough to do five windows that are three by five. And it comes with the double side sticky tape. And uh, all the instructions are on the back. If you follow instructions, they're there. <laughs> hmm. And we'll show you how easy peasy it is to put it up. All right, first things first, you gotta take off your blinds. If you have blinds, otherwise you're gonna be putting plastic over the blinds, that does not work. And we cleaned the windows already, so they're nice and clean on the inside anyway. We'll have to do the outside too. Took the screen off as well. Oh. So that's out of the way. Yep. Yeah, we won't be needing the screen because we won't be opening this window anyway. This is the one that's right by our dinette and it gets so cold here, so we're gonna... This will make the biggest difference at the, with this window. Sticky, double-sided, Double yep. comes in the kit. All along the edge, we'll go all along this. These black marks are, it's not dirty, it's just metal. <laughs> Working with a curved window makes it a little more challenging.
feel like a surgeon. Scalpel. <laughs> Okay, up in our bedroom, I'll just show you a couple things. First of all, foam goes in here to keep the cold air from coming out of the vent. We do that in all our vents. Second thing is we keep our, our doors open on our big closets to keep airflow going in. We have a fan blowing all the time. The other thing is we have this going against the window it's called Insultec, and this is what a lot of people put in their windows to keep the sun out in the summer and the cold out in the winter. Well, we don't want to be blocking our windows with this, when, especially when we could be getting sunshine in and everything else. So this is up in the bedroom because we like it dark in the bedroom anyway. These are insulated curtains that I made and they are also uh, room darkening. The only problem with this about having it go all the way across is that we have very small windows. There are days when we want to have the sunshine coming in. We want to have this window open a little bit. Gary has one on his side too. It's actually a little bigger than this. It goes to about here. But we just figure, well, that's enough breeze to come in just to come in in that little bit. Now the tape is on all the way around. Gary's taking off the backing. So now it's just the sticky stuff is left. This stuff is really, really thin and it's really, really wide. And it doesn't feel like it should be able to do the job that it does, but it, it really works well at blocking out that cold. So right now we're just measuring to see how long to make it. So you just have to cut it. The really nice thing about using this instead of the Insultec on the windows is that it doesn't make it so dark inside. You can look out the window and see what's going on. Ooh, and it sticks really well. I'm gonna have to stretch it no, out. No, no. I'm not trying to. Okay, I gotta put the phone down. <laughs> okay, it's really tight now. It's not not as tight as it's gonna be, but we have you have it stretched across top to bottom. It's a bear because <laughs> it keeps wanting to stick when it's not supposed to yet. We recommend starting on the sides and working your way over. Maybe you've done this before and you think it's easier to do it start at the top and work down. I don't know. But this is the way we've always done it, and it seems to work pretty well. So now we'll cut off this excess when we're done. And right now we're going to get the hair dryer, and we're going to shrink this. I got Gary's hair dryer out. <laughs> you don't want it to be too hot, just kind of a medium heat. Right now it's still kind of, you know, can, you can feel it moving in and out. When it's done, it's going to be like tight as a drum. Really? Yep. So you can get your drumsticks out yeah. and play on the window. <laughs> now just one last thing to do would be to put the window blinds back up. Let's 
Good one on that end further. Another thing we're doing at night only because it's warm enough during the day is we're, we're disconnecting the water. Gary just fills up the fresh water tank and then we just disconnect this from the faucet and shut it off. We don't have to worry about the hose freezing or having any water freezing inside it. When we're hooked up to water, this is where it goes in, the city water connection. Otherwise, he just fills up the fresh water tank instead, which is here, and then, and then completely disconnects this. Another thing we do is we keep the cabinet doors open in the bathroom and in the kitchen at night when it's colder just to get heat underneath there for the, the pipes and everything. We're using a space heater. It's an oscillating space heater and that, that's been working pretty good during the day. And then uh, at night we have it on low. We put it on like 68. 67, 68, and then the furnace kicks in when it gets to a certain point too. So we've got both things going the last few nights and yeah. But during the day we can have all the heat shut off and we can just use the sunshine coming in when it's sunny. That helps a lot. All right, easy peasy. <laughs> Ready to do the next window? <laughs> It'll be so worth it though. And then we can be looking out the window. We aren't looking at Insultec and having a dark little cave in here. We're gonna we can still let the light in. Thank you for watching and we really appreciate having you along with us on our journey. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below and then next to it a little bell is going to pop up. Ring the bell and you'll be notified every time new videos come up. And until next time, God bless. God bless.